Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne with First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. And I hope you're well today. It's beautiful here in Ohio. It's a sunny day. It's only in the low 70s as I, as I uh, taped this this morning. Um, our, our field is being hayed at this, uh, you know, uh, this week. And so all that long uh, grass or foliage is, is being uh, mowed down and put into bales that will go into animals' bellies here. And it's a, it's a beautiful area if you're ever in northern Ohio between uh, Vermilion and Wakeman. And uh, we're in a rural area, and uh, we're very blessed to be where we're at, and uh, thankful for the congregation that God has given us. And I hope you'll come and visit us and be part of us if you're ever in this area. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm getting more and more upset with uh, what, if, what I'm seeing in society today. We see in commercials where the homosexual crowd is, is uh, continuing to put images of two men together or two women together, and and I understand now that they're going to, uh, they, that I think it's one of the uh, social media sites, um, movie sites that are going to put a, a, a you know, preschool car um, cartoon out that uh, shows a, a, a gender non-biased person. So they're, it's not going to be identifying as male or female. It's just going to be it. It's going to be an it. And we're, we're pushing this up on society. I'm getting notes, uh, you know, on email that, you know, well, I'm going to start, uh, you know, I'm going to get rid of, you know, anybody who's anti-homosexuality uh, or transgenderism. Why can't you just leave them alone? Why can't, why is there so much hate in the world? I know that when I put up a, uh, a message about a local church having a, the rainbow sign and, talking about how they are accepting of all gender or non-gender or, or whatever gender um, to come into their church or more than welcome there. Well, you know, in truth, they're all welcome here, but they're not going to become members here. If they come here, they're going to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and and Lord willing, they're, re, uh, they're going to be preached on to repent of, of their sins. And we, we wonder, I don't know about you, but I, I sit there and shake my head and said, you know, how did we get from there to here? How did we get to uh, from where this was called sin in the church and has always been called sin, has always been rebuked according to the word of God, but now it's being accepted in the pulpits, in the churches today, because we have allowed, because uh, we've let our, our guard down, we've let the walls down, we've, we've said we wanted the unsaved to be part of the church, but what we've done is let the, the unsaved, let the world become the church. And we're no longer desiring to be separate from them. Listen, you know, someone put on there when I when I did that, I got I got oh, I got some feedback on when I talked about that disgusting me about that church with that rainbow sign. You know, I got a lot of pushback on that. And, uh, and certainly, you know, what we're saying here is that we love those who are caught up in the sin. Our desire is that they repent. But in no way will we condone that, uh, that sin. Just like we will not condone premarital sex or condone, uh, you know, spousal abuse or anything else. It's a sin. And as a church, I would hope that people understand that we continue, we will continue to preach against sin. You say, Pastor, where's the precedence in this? Where where do you see that uh, that that is is sinful? Well, you only have to go to Romans chapter one. People say, Oh, that was an Old Testament thing, and it really didn't pertain to homosexuality and all that stuff. Have you not read Romans chapter one? One of the great books in all the Bible. It says, Wherefore God gave them to up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creator, uh, creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever and ever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust toward one another, 
men with men working that which is unseemly and redeeming in themselves and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meek. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Romans chapter 1, verses 24 through 38. What's he saying over and over again that this lifestyle that we're, that everybody is saying is normal is not normal. It goes against how man was created, how women were created. It goes against uh, nature itself. Now, let me get this straight. I want everybody to understand this. That we're attacking the sin and not the person. See, we, we say no to drugs, but we say yes to the addict. We want to help the addict. We want that addict to be able to get off the drugs and be able to live a normal life. As a church, we say no to the sin, but we love the sinner. We want them to repent of their sins and turn away from it and, and, and be free in Jesus Christ and be saved. But make no mistake about it. There is no such thing as a homosexual Christian. There is a there, there may be a Christian who has who was once caught up in the sin and has repented uh, of their sin and turned to Christ, and they may still um, struggle with that sin just like an addict may continue to uh, struggle with, with drugs. Uh, 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 someone who grew up in pornography may still struggle with pornog uh, pornography, but they don't justify their sin. They don't say that God condones their sin. They're not saying that God made them this way, so it's it's right. They're, they're falling under the word of God, and they understand that they're sinful, and they repent, they confess their sins, and God is, is able to cleanse them, and God can deliver them. That is the message of the church. Jesus Christ came to die to save them, just like he came to save me, and just like he came to save you. So if you're a homosexual today, or you're an addict, or you, you've, got, you've been in jail, or you've been this and you've been that, let me tell you what, Jesus Christ came to set you free. And the truth will set you free. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life and no man can come to the father but by me that truth in jesus christ will set you free won't you pray and receive him as your savior right now won't you say dear god i confess that i'm a sinner i've struggled with sin all my life and i don't want to live this way anymore i repent of my sins and receive jesus christ as my savior please come into my life and save me now and save me forever in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen? Well, amen. Remember that God loves you. And, and, and I love you as well. And I'll talk to you soon.